Today's video is a widely requested one. It's a spinoff of the video I did planning my wade fishing trips. Um, I think it was using apps. It was a video about apps. And that video killed me to make and edit and all that stuff. But I'm going to do one for summertime now. The patterns have changed up a little bit. Um, I'm, I, I was exposed to the C word, I don't know, 10, 12 days ago. Did everything I was supposed to, went and took the test. It's been eight days, still haven't gotten a result from the test. I'm trying to do the responsible thing and you know, stay to myself, not risk spreading any of that stuff. So what's bad for me is good for y'all. We're back in the studio. I can do a bit more than I've been doing you know, down in Matagorda. I've, I've had to reschedule everything this week. So that's what we're gonna do. Thank you so much for all the comments that I get on, on every, every uh, video. It not only helps my channel grow, but I read every one of them. If, if you see that little you know, heart thing by it, that means I read it, I respond to everything I can. I get a lot of my ideas, a lot of my inspiration from those comments, so keep the comments coming. Um, if you enjoy the video at all, hit the like button. It helps me plan for the direction this channel goes and what we're doing next. So thank you so much for your support, your interaction. We're going to uh, talk about wade fishing this summer a little bit, then I'm going to get into Google Earth. We're going to set up another trip just like I did on the apps video and just do what I think that you guys are wanting me to do. All right, so as usual, let's jump right into it. Right now, from what, what I'm seeing where I'm at on the coast, is there's less and less of the little small shad, the little small shrimp. Now you're looking more at fingerling mullet, mid-sized mullet. So I'm gonna run through some of my go-to everyday lures real quick. I'm gonna do a video later with more of how I work them, how I rig them and everything. But first things first is this gambler flapping, I think it's called a flapping shad. The thing I like about the gambler are two things. One. It has a belly slit in it, so I can actually rig this thing weedless. It casts pretty good, um, okay, but I'll, I'll throw weedless belly weight with a, a you know a sixteenth, maybe an eighth on it. And this thing's kind of buoyant, so with that lighter weight, it, it stays up in the water column um, better than some of the other plastics. And then this tail, it, it flaps around and goes absolutely nuts. Um, I like the ones that have the garlic scent in them. This one still has it. This one's been sitting in my truck for weeks and weeks. Um, next is the bigger down south lure. Um, the color just depends on where you're at. This thing casts well, has good action. It's a good size when you're comparing to the fingerling to mid-size mullet. And then I believe this is a hoagie. And there's different hoagies, but this one has that long thin tail so, and then the big paddle. So you get a lot of action in, in this one. It's a real dense, real tough bait. It lasts through a ton of fish. So if you're not really looking for something that gets torn up easily, the hoagie works well. And by the way, um, I'm not sponsored by anything that I've showed you. I am showing you this stuff because I use it, it works, I believe in it, I want you to know about it. Um, I'm not obligated in any way to show you these baits. Next, again, not sponsored, the Kelly Wiggler Ball Tail. I love this lure. It's, it's kind of, it, again, this is one that's more buoyant, so you put a 16th ounce lead head on it, and it's gonna stay up in the water column. It's real tough, it can take a beating, um, in real clear water, the red and white really like it. The um, Matagorda West Bay, Lower Laguna, Port Mansfield really like this red and white color. Then on to the rat tail plastics. Again, you hear us talk about it all the time. Mirror Lure Little John. This is another red and white one. I use it a lot in Matagorda West Bay, Lower Laguna, Mansfield. Um, I'm not sure what it is about the red and white. It's probably I mean, hit me in the comments if I'm wrong, but this is probably one of the oldest colors on the water. It's just proven it works. Um, this thing right here, when you work it, it kind of it, it, it pops like a like a shrimp running, in my opinion. So I think that that's why this one's so successful. And speaking of shrimp, this purple, this solid purple, always seems to do really well whenever there's shrimp present in the fall, in the spring, in the summer. If there's a bunch of shrimp around, I'll go to this. I think the color is called Purple Demon, but this purple right here can be really good. It's not focusing, but you guys know what we're talking about. And then on to our bigger baits. Joy, joy, joy. I'm back to the time of year that I like to use Fat Boys. You hear about them in the wintertime. 
I'm gonna do a wading video. I'm gonna throw nothing but fat boys and prove to you guys that these things catch fish year round. I mean, if you think of a fingerling mullet, that is the perfect size for a fingerling mullet. This red gill on it right here tells you that it's a floater. So this one does not have a rattle in it. It has a bigger cork and it's gonna sink a lot slower. So if you're fishing over grass, this thing is gonna stay up. It's gonna stay out of the grass. It's gonna let you fish those summertime patterns. The Soft Dine XL, I'm not really throwing the little tiny ones anymore. This is the XL. It's a, it's um, I don't use it to replace the Fat Boy. The reason I keep it in the boat, I have a lot of customers and you know, I've, I've done the quirky video where I show you how to bend it and do all that stuff. This one really doesn't require any of that. You just tie it on, walk the dog with it. It does its job. Um, this one's in the boat for customers. I, I throw it whenever I'm just mindlessly searching, but me and myself, I'd rather throw a fat boy. And then my top water of choice for this time of year is the, uh, this is a head and one knocker. Um, it's smaller than spook, uh, smaller than a super spook, bigger than a spook junior. It's got a, it's got a real nice, just, uh, you know, like it's called one knocker. It's got one bead in it. It makes a great sound. This pink and gold, it's a universal color. It'll work just about anywhere. My favorite lure for top water this time of year is a one knocker right here. So those are the lures that I'm throwing um, early in the morning, starting with the top water. Then I'll move to the plastics or the, the twitch baits, the quirkies or the soft dines. But first thing in the morning, I'm throwing that top. Then I'm going to the quirkies or the plastics, just depending on what I see. And really it's more of a, just a, a gut feeling or what am I in the mood for when I'm choosing between going to a plastic or the twitch bait. Now, if I go to the twitch bait and it's not working, obviously I'm moving on to the plastic and vice versa, but there's really no rhyme or reason for me why I choose one or the other, other than if I see a bunch of quirky size bait fish popping around, I'm probably gonna go to the quirky first, then if that doesn't work, switch over to the plastic. So with all that being said, we'll get into that more depth later on down the road. Now I'm going to jump into Google Earth. We're gonna set up two scenarios um, some of us have grass to fish, some of us don't. So I'm gonna pull into screen here a shoreline that has no grass, a shoreline that does have grass. The, my approach and my uh, method of working through those areas throughout the morning, we'll, talk, we'll start daylight and then you know move to mid morning. One thing I want you to know about the summertime is the water's hot now. Early in the morning, the fish are going to be pulled up and eating. I say gonna with an asterisk. They should be pulled up and eating. By about 10, 10.30 in the morning, I'm usually done unless I'm really grinding it out or I have customers that want to stay out there. But this time of year, especially before I was guiding, we would go out and fish daylight to about 10, go back to the house, take a nap, chill out, and then you know go out 4.30, 5 o'clock, fish 5 until dark. The, the feeding windows seem to be a lot better right after sunrise uh, right after sunrise and right before sunset versus the middle of the day right now really pay attention to your moon phases if you've had a full moon all night you're going to get an early early bite then it's probably going to be tough throughout the day if you've got a new moon then your bite's going to be a little bit longer so i'm getting long-winded here let's jump into google earth we'll set up these approaches and you know talk about what we're going to do there all right guys so i've already done the apps video you can we can go back and find those so Let's, let's call it, we're gonna call it a, a southeast wind. So our wind direction is this way. We're gonna say that the tide is coming in. I'm gonna pull my boat in. The way I'm gonna play this, let's say I wanna fish from here to here. So I'm gonna pull my boat in and I'm gonna park somewhere right in here. So we have the wind is going to let us work all the way down this shoreline and kind of fan cast out this way. And then the tide, we see it coming in, so it's actually it's going to be flooding water up onto the flats all in here, right? So that's that's my reasoning for where I'm going to park the boat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get out of the boat, and since the tide and everything is coming in, I'm going to probably post up about right here. Now this is early in the morning. This is the the, the sun's just came out, so I'm expecting with the tide coming in that the fish are gonna be pulled up on these flats feeding, right? So I'm gonna come here with the tide coming in. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this, this gut right here. I'm not gonna spin forever on it because the tide is coming this way, so it's not pulling any bait out of these marshes. It's pushing into it. But I'm gonna give that just a little bit. 
And then I'm going to cross this gut and I'm going to start working these edges here. I'm going to be casting into the shoreline and away from the shoreline. Now one thing to pick up is you can see the sandbar ridges in here. So that lets you know that if you walk out this way, you're going to be getting constant depth changes throughout. So we'll come back to that later, but remember that part right there. So what I'm going to do, we're still early in the morning, and I'm going to work through here, and I'm going to be hitting all of this. I'm going to be staying kind of tight, right? By the time I get down here, I'll probably put a couple hours into it. Now it's getting to be, you know, 8, 8 o'clock, 8.30 maybe. At that point, that's whenever I'm going to wrap around, and I'm going to start working my way back and forth like this. Now, this, this, this wind... You know, it's not 20, 25, it, it's, you know, let's say, it, let's say it's 10 to 15. So it's still manageable to work and cast out this way. In fact, with my twitch baits, which I would probably be switched to by now after I work the top water all through here, they actually work better if you throw them 45 into the wind and then let the wind either blow it out to you coming back this way or let the tide pull it coming back this way. So that's one thing to know about the twitch baits. You don't just stand and throw them downwind over and over and over. But I'm going to work back out through here mid-morning. And then by the time we get to later morning, that's whenever I'm in deeper water. Um, we'll call up here, you know, knee-deep water. But out here, you're looking, you know, belly-deep water. As the, as the water gets hotter, the day gets hotter, the sun gets higher, the fish tend to want to move off into a little bit deeper water and that's where I'm coming back to these guts that you can see in here and not, I guess they're not particularly guts but they're just sandbars that are stacked up so what I do with customers very often is we're gonna walk until we can hit this gut here and we're gonna fish that for a little bit and then we're gonna move up 10 15 20 feet and we're gonna fish this one and then this one and then this one until we until we get bites I always tell my customers what, what, as soon as somebody gets a thump, a tick, anything, let us know so that we can stop and work that gut. Because what, what so often happens when you find these is the fish, they're moving up and down them. Okay, So you might get one or two bites, but if you stay there and work on it, then you're giving yourself a chance to catch those groups as they're coming through over and over and over again. So now let, let's switch up the scenario here. Now it is daylight again, and we are experiencing an outgoing tide. So now the tide is going out. Again, I'm going to come park my boat, except instead of parking in the middle of this, I'm going to park my boat right here. Now we've got a tide that is pulling everything out of the, here, 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 here. You know, everywhere, everywhere you're looking, you got tide that's pulling out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to set up and I'm going to fish this area pretty well. If that doesn't work, I'm going to move over and I'm just going to hit each of these drains. Now I'm fishing along the way, but I'm hitting each of these drains. I don't I'm not really seeing the the little shad balls like we were seeing in the spring. Now I'm looking for for a little mullet flipping and popping. And so again, I'm going to work, but, I, but instead of concentrating a lot more on these flats, which there could still be fish, I'm still going to fan cast to them as I'm walking. But now I'm, I'm concentrating on these areas more, more so. Then as the day gets as longer, then I'm coming back and I'm doing the same thing out here that I was doing with the incoming tide. All right, so now we're we're on the we're on the grass. We're you know there, the grass is it's easier to pick apart. But you know me and East Matagorda Bay, I don't have a lot of grass to, to deal with. Um, I don't know a lot about East Galveston. I know West Galveston has some grass, but but everybody south of us has plenty of grass to deal with. Steve, shut up. All right, again, we're gonna say that we have a southeast wind. We're gonna give it ten to fifteen. Hopefully, it'll be lower. We can't seem to get anything lower than that right now, so it'd be unrealistic for me to, to even say that. So, and then we have an incoming tide. Again, I'm gonna bring my boat in, and I'm gonna idle up here fairly tight, and I'm gonna park it. At that point, I'm getting out. The tide is coming in. I'm not worried about these drains as much right now with that tide coming in. But I'm gonna fish the edges of these, of this, ooh, 
I'm gonna fish the edges of this grass here. I'm, I'm paying attention to this edge and if you've got any kind of clear water, you can, you can see the darker spots in the water where this grass is. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pick at the edges quite a bit. Not so much right here where I ran the boat through, but here at the edges. Um, I'm, again, I'm throwing top waters. Now when I'm working these edges, then obviously the, the lure's coming back across the grass. So if I get some blow ups in there, I know, hey, they're sitting in the grass. But after this, I'm gonna move across and I'm gonna I'm gonna work this top water all the way down this bank, you know, uh, knee deep, calf deep water. I don't care. I'm working it down here right at daylight. As as I'm going, you know, every third cast is gonna be out across this grass. I get a blow up. Well, you know the answer there. We're we're gonna stop and fish that area. All right. So I work my top water all the way down here. At that point, if I haven't found them yet, then I'm gonna move out. I'm probably gonna, if I haven't gotten any blow ups coming across here, I'm probably gonna switch to my plastic or my twitch bait and I'm gonna work the edges of all of this in here. I'm gonna work these edges. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of walk a pattern a lot like this. The summertime fishing, in the springtime video, I, I kind of showed you how to, oh, there they are, let's go work on them. The summertime fishing, it's more, it's more hunting. You're gonna find that just about anywhere you go, you're gonna see bait flipping, you're gonna see bait doing this, you're gonna doing that. Whenever you see that bait, you stop and work that area, but it's not as evident as it is in the springtime. So there, there's a lot more of this, the zig and zagging back and forth, just trying to locate them. And then let's later in the morning, we're getting eight, nine o'clock. Steve, I'm gonna ask you to be quiet, sir. About eight or nine o'clock, then I'm throwing the plastics and the twitch baits out here on the edges. I'm gonna stand out here until it's hot and it's time for me to either say uncle start catching fish again 10 o'clock in the morning somewhere in there i'm usually about done with you know any kind of weight fishing we might go out and drift and throw you know the little johns or the plastics on a quarter ounce jig head and and fish out here deeper drifting but that's 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 my approach for for weight fishing in the summer it's 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 a bit less scientific it's more of a a, sea, a search and destroy sort of situation than it is you know in the springtime where you've got a wad of shad there's fish there's fish killing it the fish aren't as schooled up uh anymore in the bay there's not as much stuff for them to push together and eat on so now you're it's a lot more just out searching once you get those first couple of bites then you can really concentrate that area and really pay attention to everything you're seeing in the water but you are going to put down some miles in the summertime if 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 you're able to you know a lot of times there's a lot of boats you're gonna have to hop around boat from place to place but this is the overall skeleton of, of the 101, the basics of how I set up a wading trip. After, after I, I, you know, I, I find a pattern, then I'm going to be a lot more, you know, picky about it. But later on down the road, we'll do a more in-depth about one little thing uh, video versus, you know, the 101 basics. But you know, that's it. That's 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 how I set up my trips. Um, again. Get in the comments. Let me have some more ideas about what you guys want to see. We're gonna we're gonna keep it coming. It may be in studio. It may be on the water. It may be at the place in Matagorda. I'm um, do everything I can to keep it going. Keep some quality. Keep some content. Hey, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for all the approach. Almost 3,000 subs in what has it been? Four months. This is my 19th episode right now. Uh, 20 is next week. I can't believe time went by so fast. But hey, thanks for being here, and we will catch you on the next one.